Evening. Drickus down here. Uh, congrats on the win. Is there something extra gratifying about beating to your, oppo your opponent to the point where their corner throws in the towel? Yeah, I guess uh, I guess that's good. <laughs> no, a finish is a finish and a win is a win. So, I mean, I came tonight to, to beat the Derek Brunson, to beat the top five guy in the world, and I, I did it, and I, I felt exactly everything. Nothing surprised me in there. I said it during fight week, during the media day. In the first round, Derek Brunson always comes out banging in that first round. And I was ready for that. And I, I needed to match his pace because I knew in the second round, I'm still going to be there. In the third round, I'll be there too. He won't be there anymore. And that's exactly how it went out. Now, he's an incredible fighter. He's always game. He's very strong. He hits hard. But, you know, that's exactly it. He came in with that fire in that first round. And when I continued with that pace in the second, I could see it broke his spirit. Yeah, was there a particular moment where you felt like you had him? I think, uh, I think I could feel it early when I caught him the first time with a big punch in that second round. I think it was a kick. I'm not even 100% sure, but almost, <clears throat> almost from the first few seconds of the f second round, I could see this guy was broken. He's teased you know, retirement before this fight, before he took it, and after the fact, he tweeted, you know, hope you all enjoyed my career or something to that effect. Did he say anything to you in the cage about this potentially being his last fight or anything like that? Uh, not at all. He did look very disappointed, though, but understandably so. And, you know, if this is his last fight, he's had one heck of a run, and uh, all respect to him. 5-0 and in the UFC now. That's obviously as good as it gets to start out. So where do you feel this takes you now? Yeah, I mean, this is a this is a night to celebrate. This is not a career to celebrate. This is not a an ultimate celebration. This is one. This is a night. This is you know, just the same as my debut win. I'll be proper celebrating when I become champion. And this just put us one step closer. And you know, getting right now, I'm on the longest active win streak in the middleweight division. So nobody else putting their hand up to be the number one contender. Nobody else winning the fights in the way that I'm winning the fights, getting the finishes. And, uh, you know, it's absolutely amazing coming from a team you know, in South Africa with a style that people think, huh, what's this guy? He's not really good. Well, I'm just, I'm number five, and I just beat the number five in the world. So, yes, I am that good. And my team, we are that good, and that is what this means to me. This is not about the win and being in the top five. We're not celebrating that. But what we are celebrating is that we are that good. The, the broadcast seemed to think that Derek was maybe frustrating you with that front kick to the body. Uh, did that affect you at all in there? No, I was kind of thinking he's setting me up with something because, you know, the kick wasn't hard. It was like a sloppy kick. So I, was, I, was, I wasn't go countering it immediately because he threw that. I think that was like his first strike from the fight. But I was like, that's not, no way. He's setting me up for some weird thing if I come in. I knew in one of his previous fights, a few of them, he throws that weird um, uh, left kick, up kick, front kick vibe, and then he throws that overhand. So that's why I didn't want to enter with that. And uh, you know, he kicked it, but it wasn't. It wasn't. It's been happening all night. <laughs> uh, it wasn't. It wasn't bothering me at all. It was. Uh, you know, it wasn't that it that shot. Even when it landed, it wasn't even worth it to block it anymore. And at media day, you said you were excited for this opponent solely because you could showcase some of your other skills outside of just striking. Now, I know they threw in the towel because of strikes and everything, but do you think you did enough in there to showcase that you are a complete mixed martial arts fighter? Yeah, I, d I got a takedown, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, we set out to go and say, listen, Derek, nobody takes him down. He got that one fluke takedown in the fifth round uh, by Kevin Holland mm -hmm. after like just out wrestling Kevin the whole fight. And that second round, I was like, I'm going to take this guy down. I need to take him down. I mean, that's a, that's a skill in itself. And me and my coach, he worked on that. And I wanted to show, listen, I can wrestle with this guy. You know, he had me in that guillotine, and I turned it around. Underground, you know, he got his black belt from Renzo Gracie. Um, I was grappling with him. Only he had me in a choke. I reversed it. He had me in a couple of situations where I reversed it. I could wrestle with him. I could grapple with him. He got tired more than me. And I finished the fight, and that was, that was what it's all about. I think we saw it all in this fight. We saw striking, we saw grappling, we saw wrestling. 
and uh, he's a really strong guy and his wrestling is really good and it was it was really cool for me to be able to showcase that tonight in a perfect world uh who would you like to fight next because after this performance people on twitter are like oh drickus versus paulo costa drickus versus robert whitaker like it was up to you and the ufc came to you and says you have the pick who would paulo you costa had his chance he's behind me right now so i'm not even focusing on him uh i called him out previously because you know he was ranked in front of me but right now he can stand in line uh i know they uh, want to maybe do the Whitaker and Chemaev fight. I, you know, I don't know what the plans is with Chemaev because then he wants to fight here, then he wants to fight. I'm not sure. But, you know, I think we, if they give me, I think they're waiting to see what happens with Izzy and, and Pajera because once, if Izzy wins this fight with Pajera, I'm the only guy in the top five he hasn't fought. So that makes sense. And if Pajera wins, I'm not sure what they want to do, but at the end of the day, it must be either, uh, it's probably going to be a number one contender fight or, or a title shot. I'm happy with either of those. Then final one for me, uh, I'm sure you watched your teammate Cameron's win. Uh, it was, he won, but there was again more controversy, like his last fight with all the, the, the fouls. So when you're watching this, are you just like, my t he just can't catch a break? Look back to back <laughs> fights with a point deduction. And I really want to give him some uh, shit right now, but I'm actually feeling really bad for the guy. He's one of the nicest guys and he works so incredibly hard and now he, like he gets a bad rip, but uh, no. I, I, well, what can you say? It's so unfortunate. I really feel for the guy. You know, uh, getting those uh, fouls, but you know, it's definitely not intentional. And I mean, look at the guy. He's 22 years old and he's fighting like a veteran. I'm I'm so proud of him, and he's an incredibly, incredibly good fighter. Oh, Good. I've got just guillotine him. Right? Standing rear naked yeah. choke. Oh, looks like. beautiful. Drake is over here. Um, speaking of Cameron, you guys have fought on cards together. Just seeing him get a win, how much does that pump you up going into your fight, seeing as you sort of called him your little brother? How, how does that kind of impact you when you go into a fight? Yeah, absolutely. To, to see him win, it's, it's completely different because it's not, I'm not seeing him win. And it's, not, it's all about, I'm so happy for him because he deserves, he deserves that win. He works so incredibly hard. And another thing going out there after him is, then I know, look at, look at what we've done at our gym. You know, we're fighting out of Africa, we're living in Africa, and, you know, I know I say this a lot, but it is really something special. Uh, if you consider the, the, the fact that how young the sport is in, in Africa and South Africa, and it's, it's incredible for us to see, it's not only me, it's not only my talent, it's not only you have one gym, no, it's our gym, our coach. You know, what we do, our system, it's working. Everything we do, it's him and me, and we're putting up amazing performances. And we bring a very unique style, and we bring something that nobody else is bringing, and they can't figure this out. Um, and speaking of which, uh, it sounds like he's going to Top Golf tomorrow. Are you going to join him? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, are you allowed to drink? Uh, yeah, of course, yeah. You then can actually I'm definitely going to, to Top Golf. Alvi, you can do the old, you can breadcrumbs with me, and some beers tomorrow. Beers, pizza, see you at Top Golf. There you go. Sounds good. And, um, you know, you talked a bit about, uh, you know, an opponent. Um, I spoke to Sean Strickland actually the other day. Uh, he seems to think that you might be next for him. I know you're sort of looking ahead, but is that a fight that would interest you at all, you and Sean Strickland? Yeah, uh, well, I mean, I didn't really expect that, but, you know, the thing about fights right now, it's kind of hard because that doesn't really make sense, does it? But at the end of the day, I'm here to fight and, uh, if they pay me enough, I'll fight Sean Strickland, sure. Yeah. What do you make of Strickland? He's, you know, people either really like him, they don't like him. What, what do you make of him, maybe even not as a fighter, just as him in general? Yeah, well, what I do respect about him is he's himself. So, I mean, he's not, he has no filter, so that's good. As a fighter, you know, he's a game fighter. He's a game fighter, he comes to bang, he's not scared, and uh, that's something I respect. I think he's a fighter by heart, and I respect that. Dracus, uh, Roman Delize is fighting Marvin Vittori, and if he wins, he will also be on a five-white fight win streak. Uh, would that fight interest you if he does win that fight? Well, I mean, uh, if that fight makes sense for them for a title eliminator, yeah, sure. If that's a title eliminator fight, then that would definitely make sense. Thanks. Dracus, right here in the back. Um, not a lot of people are expecting anything to happen, but with the title fight coming up, are you going to keep the weight low just in case UFC were to give you a call? Um, you know, if I get a title shot, <laughs> weight doesn't have to be low. I'll make that weight. 
Uh, when uh, I made my debut, they phoned me on 10 days notice and I made that wait. We were in a hard lockdown, barely training. Uh, but, you know, I'm always finding a way to train, staying in shape. This is not, I don't train fight camp to fight camp. This is not something I do. This is all I do. This is my life. So they better know if they phone me, if they give me that call for a title fight, I'll be ready. You're always impeccably dressed up there, but I noticed Cameron Simon also stepped up his game since the last fight. I want to know if that was your influence or did he just, you know, saw you and took it his own initiative? No, he took his own initiative. Uh, you know, we, uh, we like, we, we're competitors at the end of the day. We have two conflicting. Uh, this suit is made by Frank Bespoke, probably the best tailor, if not the best tailor in Africa. And uh, then he has his tailor. So we are obviously competing to see who dresses the best. And like you can see, I am inspired by the one Wolf of Wall Street. And look at me. I look like an investment banker up here. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. I appreciate it.